Hello YouTube, it's the Mike 97 I'm not doing an operating system tutorial today. Uh, those will happen, but uh, today I'm going to do something a little different. I decided I was going to create a playlist to talk about um, digital logic, which is a class that can be kind of uh, tedious, uh, maybe a little bit scary for some people. And since I've been through it, and I know a thing or two about it, I thought I'd help some people out and try to provide an easy to follow way to learn this stuff. So. Uh, to start out, we're just going to be talking about super basic stuff. So we're going to talk about number systems, so we're mainly binary. Um, we'll talk about hex uh, maybe a little later. Um, we're going to talk about AND gates, OR gates, XOR gates, you know, all the good stuff there. And we're going to talk about truth tables. So to start, let's talk about number systems. Um, Decimal is a number system, right? It's what we use every day in like math and stuff like that. And the reason we use it is because it was pretty easily conceived as we have 10 fingers, 10 is easy to count to because we have 10 fingers, finger counting is good, let's use decimal. And um, it'd be really great if computers could do the same thing, but unfortunately computers can't really do the same thing. So instead of decimal, computers use binary. And binary is base 2. And the reason for that is because data or any signal travels through a wire, it can be registered as on or off, right? You flip on a light switch, the light's on. Flip it off, the light's off. So there's only two states there. And in convention, and by convention I mean everybody does this, there's nobody that doesn't do this, cough, the United States and metric. No, the United States does this as well. One means on in binary, and zero means off. You know what on also means? This also means true, and this means false. So, converting between binary and decimal isn't that hard. Because if we dissect the way a, a decimal number is put together, so let's look at the 462, we can see that there's three places here, right? There's a ones place, there is a tens place, and there is a one hundreds place. And each place here increases by a factor of 10, where this is 10 to the 0, this is 10 to the 1, and this is 10 to the 2. So the multiplier, which is what I call this right here, those are multipliers, and that is a function 10, whoopsies, 10 to the n, where n is the number of places out we are. So if we're 5 places out, our multiplier from the fifth place out is going to be 10 to the 5. Binary works the exact same way. So let's take a look at the number um, 1100. Zero, zero, okay, so I want to space it out a little bit. Okay, we got four places here. So we're going to go, remember, 2 to the n now is our pattern because our base is 2, not 10. So 2 to the 0 still 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. And 2 to the 3 is 8. So to figure this out, just like you would here, 4 times 100 is 400. Plus 6 times 10 is 60. Plus 2 times 1 is 2, giving us 462. We go with 8 times 1 is 8. 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 0 is 0, which gives us the number 12. That simple. Going back is a little bit more tricky, but that's only really because sometimes doing it in your head is a little hard. Other than that, not hard. Um, so let's go backwards now. Let's use 12 as our example. If we want to convert 12 from decimal into binary, what we have to do is we have to divide it by 2, 
noting what our, uh, the modulus of the division is. And uh, going all the way in, until our uh, quotient, our truncated quotient is less than our base. So if that sounds really complicated, I'll explain it by doing it and it won't be so complicated. So 12 divided by 2 is when look at the modulus is 12 mod 2 what is it 0 or 1 it's 0 another way to think about this is just 12 divisible by 2 yes so we're putting a 0 so what is 12 divided by 2 the answer is 6 our quotient is 6 6 divided by 2 6 mod 2 is 0 we'll go with a 0 so the quotient there is 3, 3 divided by 2. 3 mod 2 is 1, so we'll put a 1 here. 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half, so we'll put a 1 up here. Remember, it's the tr truncated quotient, right? So 1 and a half, 1 1.5, truncate the 0.5, it's 1. 1 divided by 2, 1 mod 2 is 1. And uh, you'll notice that our quotient here, our truncated quotient, is now less than our base. So we're done. And all we have to do now is flip this around, because right now, this is the most significant bit, and this is the least significant bit. So all we have to do is just flip it, and we've got it. So 1, 1, 0, 0. And that happens to be exactly what we have up here. So the next little thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to discuss gates. So there are four basic gates and three not quite so basic but still basic gates. All right, a gate really in itself is basic because everything is built on them. Um, and you'll I think you'll see what I mean in when I when I flesh this out. So the four basic basic gates are going to be your AND gate, which looks like that, your OR gate, which has a curved back, and a curved front, your XOR gate, also called exclusive OR, which is basically an OR gate just with this little extra thing there, and then a NOT gate. A NOT gate you'll notice is the only one that has one input. This is two inputs, two inputs, two inputs, one input. And the reason is because a NOT gate is the simplest of all. It just inverts the signal. Then the three gates that are maybe slightly diff more advanced or a little less basic would, are the NAND, the NOR, and the XNOR. And that's only because the output of each of these is negated to create a new gate. So you can create a NAND gate with an AND gate and a NOT gate. So our NAND looks like that. It's just got a little circle in front of it. Our OR circle in front of it. Our XOR circle in front of it. And then inverting our NOT gate is kind of silly. That's just a wire, so there's no, like, NOR NOT or whatever. Uh, and generally, uh, this little this little circle is kind of always seen to be as an inversion. So if you have, like, a NOT gate or something in front of one of your, one of your inputs, you can just put a circle in front of it, and that's generally assumed to be an inverted signal into the input. So these are our general gates, okay? So let's... Remember we have and, or, uh, x, whoopsies, Ugh, x, or, and not, and then nand, nor, x, nor. Okay. So looking at these, it, the and gate, uh, the output of the and gate is going to be true if the two inputs are both true. Remember, true is one. So if the inputs are both asserted, that's another way of saying it, then the output is going to be one. 
an OR gate if one of the as long as at least one of the inputs is asserted as is one the output's going to be one so that means that you can have both of these asserted and the output still one so you can have effectively be an AND gate when both are on but when both are off or but when when one of them is on and the other is off and no it ceases to be an AND gate right because an AND gate would be zero and it's still one an exclusive or gets rid of that like incorporated and element to it. So an exclusive or is asserted only when A is, or when, when the first input, we'll call it A, is asserted, or when B is asserted, not both. A not gate, we talked about NAND gates, AND gate, just invert the output. NOR gate, OR gate, just invert the output, and XNOR. XOR just invert the output. So let's flesh this out with a truth table. A truth table is a really easy way to visualize what an out what all the possible outputs of a circuit can be. So let's start out with an AND. And there we go. And all right. So let's have our element A or our variables A, B, and F for our output, right? Zero, zero, and then let's just come up with all the possible combinations for A and B. So zero, zero, B can be one, and A can be zero. A can be one, and B can be zero, and then they can both, of course, be one. So as you can tell, this is just counting up it, as if A and B were combined to form a two-bit, uh, a two-bit uh, binary number. And then F is our output. So an AND, remember, it only is on when A and B are both on at the same time. So in these first three, there's a, a zero in at least one of them. So these are all zeros. The only time when A and B are both true is down here. So we're going to get a one. All right, see how that works? So it's just looking at what the inputs for each of the arguments are and then determining based off of the logic of various gates that you might have in your circuit what the output's going to be. So let's take a look at OR. A, B, F. All right, for OR, I'm just going to assume that we're going in the same order, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. All right. For 0, 0, A is not asserted, B is not asserted, we're 0. For 0, 1, A is not asserted, but B is asserted. So we've got 1. A is asserted, 1. And then they're both asserted. So at least one of them is on, so it's still 1, right? For X or... Uh, it's or. But the last one. Because X or... One of them has to be on, one of and the others must be off. So if A is on, B must be off. If A is off, B must be on. Here, A and B are both on, so it's zero. And then a NOT gate. It's pretty obvious. Zero, one, one, zero. It just inverts the output. If you want to look at NANDs, it's basically the inverse of this. Okay, so it turns out that my camera stopped recording, like, just as I was about to finish. So, this is all done, but um, as I was saying with the inverses, so NAND gate, it's just the inverse of AND, so 0 comes to 1, 0 comes to 1, 0 comes to 1, 1 comes to 0, or, same thing, 0 goes to 1, etc, etc. Um... That's basically all there is, uh, and honestly, it was literally just 30 more seconds, and my stupid camera cut out, so uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Um, next time, we'll probably talk about uh, creating maybe slightly more complicated circuits and looking at truth tables for those. It's pretty easy to figure out truth tables for just a single gate, but... Uh, we'll make the next step to uh, incorporating a bunch of gates and coming up with a circuit to do something. 
and we'll probably also talk about De Morgan's theorem, and that should be a, a pretty decent part to this series. So uh, until then, uh, I hope this was informative and useful, and uh, I will see you in the next video.